And here is our perspective on politics by What Really Matters with Tyler and Matthew. On KOWL 1490, The Owl Tahoe's Talk. So what first should we talk about? I mean, I know the election 2016 is really hitting the news. Yeah, uh, I would... Hit the news is an understatement, I would say. Um, okay, you're right. No, it hit the news more than a year ago. No, yeah. like back in back in April when, like, Ted Cruz and... Yeah, and, and, it, and it's just been beating the news ever since. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, when it, whenever, thing, whenever something doesn't happen in a day, or, I mean, whenever something happens that is not, like, a huge event then all the news talks about is politics. Oh, it's like yeah. it's it's not even like they talk about politics that breaks from talking about something else. It's just CNN is like constantly political show and then if something terrible happens then they talk about it for a little bit and then go right back to politics. Yeah, I mean w- when we're not in the election season, usually politics is breaking news. Now politics is the news, breaking news is the other stuff. <laughs> and there's I don't think there's any breaking news anymore. Most of the most of the things about the politicians aren't like they're not new revelations like let, let's say that let's say that hillary clinton has another scandal yeah right like that's not news yeah, they're, that's they're, just another that's just another stage in her campaign yeah i mean e- even e- even even on fox news which i think i think we all can agree doesn't really like hillary clinton um e- even on fox news they're probably going to be like it's another clinton scandal here we go another m- couple minutes segment about it now let's move on this is what trump is saying yeah <laughs> like, I mean, We're I don't want going through the motions. I don't want to call the media propaganda, but I'm sure they sit down and that's, they. Well, that's not a bad thing. I don't think it's a bad thing to call something propaganda because let's be real, everyone has an agenda. Like everything is propaganda. That's true, but generally, journalism is supposed to be objective. Yeah. You know, when they talk about politics, they're not supposed to emphasize like they, they don't have in the article. And this is just one of the Hillary Clinton scandals. Uh, That's not objective. Maybe it's just me, but I don't hear a lot of people saying, like, oh, the media is objective. I hear I, most most people I hear talk about the media. They're like, oh, that's left wing or that's right wing. It's all they're all they've all got a message to sell. I feel like that's something people generally agree on. Well, that's the thing. I'm, I'm pretty sure I've I've read studies that back this up, but everyone thinks the media is biased against them. Oh, like liberals, yeah. liberals think that Fox News is out to get them, and then conservatives think that CNN, MSNBC, and all of them are out to get them. Right? Have, have they it's, ever? I mean, have they considered that maybe they're just out to get each other? <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I think people don't when they talk about the media, they think it's just like one hive mind. They don't consider that it's like a group of organizations, yeah. and that some of them have have political leanings to the left and some of them have political leanings to the right so it's it's not just like the media has a bias that's like saying a group of people has a bias like sure some of them might be biased but not all of them at once and before before we get into you know uh hillary and trump and why and what we disagree with on both of them because i feel like that's going to be most of this episode just disagreeing with the two major party candidates (laughs) um but uh it's important to point out that we just had an important visit in Lake Tahoe just, I mean, well, at the time of recording just yesterday, but by the time this comes out, it'll be two days ago. I think. Two days, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, we had, no, three days ago. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> just continue. All right. <laughs> uh, we had a visit from the big man, the head honcho, the man in chief himself, President Barack Obama. Came up to Tahoe and spoke at our uh, at the political, the environmental summit. <laughs> he spoke at the environmental summit. And I don't know anything about this because I wasn't there. So maybe you could explain what happened. Whew. All right. Now I tried to take some uh, notes on this and do some audio recordings. It didn't turn out well. Um, so sadly, we're probably not going to play any audio for you. Yeah. But you know what? You you could probably just look that up, and, and you could get very good recordings of it anyway. And if I can scrounge something up while I'm editing this, I'll, I might throw it in somewhere where it seems like it fits. So we'll see. Um, anyway, Obama did show up, and it was really cool, you know? I mean... Say, say what you will about Obama, but it's very hard not to argue that he is a really good speech maker. I mean, well, that's that's why uh, he was getting a lot of praise in 2008 for being a great orator. 
he, I mean, you don't understand how good he is at orating until you're in the audience and you're hearing him, like, work sort of with the audience and feel the feedback. And he's not afraid to talk loudly over applause so that that sort of makes his speech a little more soaring. He's just really good at orating. You know, although one thing I've noticed is I've kind of looked at videos from 2008 and videos from 2012 and 2016. And I don't know whether you've kind of noticed the same thing, but he's slowed down a lot. He takes a lot more breaks in his speech. That's that's something interesting that I also noticed. He, well, just like I did right there, he does that. He does his little, you know, like voice cracky, like, uh, you know, sort of thing. And then continues with his speech. I think that has a lot to do with he's he's always looking up from his papers, something I noticed from his speech today. No, not today. Yesterday. Three days ago. Whatever. <laughs> um, it's something I noticed from his speech. He he didn't really look down at the paper that much. It seemed like he may have like memorized it and had a little bit of improv in there. And frankly, he's just pretty good at comedy too he plays off the crowd really well he he makes the audience laugh not the sort of political chuckle that you have when like a politician makes a you know little politics joke like legitimate laughter from from the people in the crowd it's just a re- i mean frankly i mean i'm not afraid to say it was a treat to see him orate he's really good at it you know i have a few theories though do you think Do you think maybe he slowed down his speech because he doesn't want to make mistakes because he knows that people will pick apart and he's more he's more self-aware than he was in 2008? Oh, absolutely. I think so. And also, you have to remember, he's been in office for eight years. That's a long time to change. Yeah, have you seen pictures of him in 2008 versus (laughs) 2016? His hair has gone totally gray. I mean, he's crazy. So... I think this kind of uh, leads into our next point. You know, we're talking about great orators making the crowd laugh. So, um, Donald Trump. Yeah. Uh, he, what do you think? Is he like that? Is he? Does he have the same charm as Obama, or is it just is it something else? Let Let me let me tell you what I think about Trump. Um, I don't really want to like disparage Trump voters out there, even though I disagree with Trump. I also disagree with Hillary Clinton. And- It's a lot of disagreement happening, but Trump doesn't have the same thing Obama has where he can come on stage and be real friendly with the audience and, you know, look at hecklers and be like, all right, I'll get to your point. You know, hang on. Let me let me get to that. He does that a lot. He'll call he'll point to a heckler and be like, what are you saying? And, you know, sort of address them. Uh, Trump is not the same kind of orator, in my opinion. Trump, he he is a lot more divisive in his speeches. He likes to rile people up as opposed to make them really mellow and sort of, you know, clapping with his speech. He likes to make them do the sort of, you know, like really like, you know, Trump, 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 that sort of thing, as opposed to, you know, a good clap and a good laugh. He he likes to lead people from the front. He's a really strong guy on the podium. He presents this, you know, strongman uh, persona and he... He really just, well, I mean, it's hard to say he doesn't speak his mind, or at least used to speak his mind. He's kind of toning down now. I'll get to that later. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, it's it's hard to argue he isn't. I'll I'll tell I'll tell you what I'm talking about later. But okay, go ahead. But uh, Trump. I, I mean, I, I don't want to guide this too much. But basically, I'm just saying Trump is a different style of order of orator. He's still really good at orating but in a different sense he doesn't have the same community aspect that obama has when he goes on stage you feel sort of like he's got (laughs) a big presence and he's got this sort of cult of personality built up around him well okay so i wanted to also know your opinion on this and i think it's i think it's a difference in position that donald trump and obama are in because i think by nature obama is a politician that also happens to be entertaining (laughs) But Trump is an entertainer that also happens to be a politician. Yeah. So uh, Trump is able to fill up entire stadiums full of people because they want to see him. They're there for the entertainment. Yeah. Whereas people are people are generally supportive of Obama because of because of his political moves, not because he's entertaining. It's just that he happens to be entertaining on the side. Yeah. So th- I guess that kind of sums up what you were talking about being a different orator. And it's also important to note that Trump had a brand before his political campaign. 
We all sort of vaguely, if we didn't know exactly who Trump was, we had a vague idea, you know, he was the guy on Celebrity Apprentice who said, you're fired, and, you know, it was a big uh, pop culture personality. You know, I'm, um, not, I'm not sure who I heard this from, but someone told me, like a, like a long time ago, they said, oh, Donald Trump is running, I, th- I thought he was a cartoon character on TV. <laughs> what? And it was... I think people, people like, obviously they didn't know much about Donald Trump. Yeah. They probably know more now that the political season is, Absolutely. like, very matured. But I think it's kind of funny because, uh, I, you know, like, I guess he I guess he had that, he had that in people's minds, that he was solely for TV. So now it's like the typical person that looks good on TV running as a politician. You know, it's almost stereotypical, right? Yeah. that's That's been a part of politics for a long time, though. I think... What's really interesting about this, though, is what what you said about Obama and Trump and how they're polar opposites. I mean, they are not really fans of each other, at least right now. Obama has been very, very vocal about his dislike of Trump. He, even beyond what a president, a Democratic president is expected to say about a Republican nominee. Yeah, I would expect them to come up and say, this person has incorrect policies. They they don't know what they're talking about. They they are misguided. Yeah, but, but, but Obama is completely saying, this person has no political experience. Please get him out of the office. That's Obama's yeah, attitude. He's saying he's not fit for office. Like, that is, that is pretty hardline stuff, you know? He's not just doing it because it's the Republican candidate, he strongly is opposed to Trump. And I think he also sort of is feeling the weight of it would it would reflect really badly on him since he's a Democrat. Um, if a Republican candidate like Trump went into the White House, that would really be a, a black mark on his... Well, it'd be um, in like presidency. an exact opposite yeah. comes into the, the presidency. It like, would, you made all this progress, yeah. and now we're just going to take a step backwards, it, in his mind. It, it would be... I mean, from Obama's perspective, that would be ending his political career with a huge failure. Oh, I thought you were just going to say ending his political career, but that, <laughs> <laughs> that I don't think that means much to Obama. No, he's, he's already leaving uh, the presidential um suite so he's he, he's already pretty much done politically he'll still be doing speeches because he's great at that but oh i'm sure he will i'm i think most politicians generally just give speeches after they're done yeah. but i think I, I maybe i should say it but this election seems a lot more tense and a lot more polarized than elections in the past well and this is what i was saying earlier not in this not in this show but just earlier with with you tyler but it's basically like in in previous times, elections used to have gaffes. Like politicians would say something, they would get on the media, and then and then political commentators would say, "Oh, that's why he's dropping in the polls." Or that's you know, like remember Mitt Romney and his binders full of women. Absolutely, that I mean that huge scandal that that dropped him in the polls. Like that, that used to be a deal. thing. It used to be a thing that you had this idea of a politician as this upright moral character. And even maybe you disagreed with the other guy or whatever, but I mean, more so than elections in the past, it's a complete, it's, it's just a battle between two cults of personality. That's oh, all it absolutely. is. It's what I like to say is it's a battle between two brands. What we've got right now is the Trump brand, which has been really strong and built over years and sort of brought into the public's just subconscious psyche where we all kind of knew who Trump was when he came in. Well, so has Hillary Clinton. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Hillary Clinton has the Clinton brand, the Clinton Foundation, Bill Clinton. You know, they've really built up their name. They had a really strong base from the very beginning of her presidency. Well, think about it. For for a non- I mean, her candidacy, not presidency. She's not president. (laughs) Oh, you're already predicting. Well... (laughs) (laughs) Well, for for a non-brand president to get popular, like Obama, you have to agree with his policies, or you have to agree with something. You have to say there's some redeeming factor in this politician, yeah. or he has to be really good at speeches, like like Obama. But for Trump and Hillary Clinton, it's not that there's some redeeming factor about them. It's just that you are already invested in that brand to begin with, so you're in it for the long haul. And the thing is, these these two candidates have really crazy low approval ratings. People do not like them at all. Oh, yeah, they're hated more than any other candidates. Uh, I think since Gallup started recording it, I think it was about the 60s when they started recording this. Yeah, I've heard that too. And 
Uh, yeah, they're both so hated that each side is basically voting against the other candidate. They're not really voting for their candidate, unless you're a diehard Trumper or a just a diehard Hillary Clinton fan. Mainly what people are doing, especially like bipartisans and, you know, really sort of moderate people, they're just looking at the other side and being like, I do not want to be part of that train. <laughs> and they're just... They're just voting for the opposite. It's another one of those um, better Which, of two evils. That's always been a part, of, a part of politics. People have always talked about, you know, for ages they've said, just democracy is just voting against someone that you hate, and it's so agonizing. Yeah. But this is, this is like the, the epitome. This is the example of an election where you're voting against someone. Oh, and, yeah. and we're not just making that up because we hate the candidates or something. The, I mean, the public polling has showed this, that the public, the public polling is... When you ask people why are they voting for Hillary Clinton, their number one reason is because we can't have Donald Trump in the presidency. When you're asking people why they're voting for Donald Trump, it's because we can't have crooked Hillary in the presidency. Yeah, and there are legitimate uh, complaints against both of them. That I, I want to go into them. Do you want to go into them? Sure, go into them. All right, so with Trump, let me start with Trump because he's, he's a little bit of an easier target. People have more of a, more of a soft spot when it comes to... Um, attacks at well, Trump. I'm not could trying I, to attack, but... Could I add, though, I, it's more of like, when you're criticizing Trump, it's for a multitude of small reasons. When you're criticizing Hillary, it's because of the one, you know, Benghazi. You know, yeah, you just you just shout it. It's like your phrase, you know, like, it's because of Benghazi. That's right. not why I'm voting. I've got a little bit more reasons than that. Let me, let me just say that. <laughs> but for Trump, he just doesn't have a lot of political experience, first of all. That's, that's the big problem he has a lot of experience in business but economics in business and on the federal level are two entirely different beasts in business it's all about you know managing bankruptcy sometimes it's okay to go into debt things like that well then let's not downplay his education though he he is he he is is well educated educated and he's very intelligent i'm saying that that doesn't necessarily translate to being good at dictating national policy on economics which i understand there's a little bit, bit of this that i actually understand because when trump supporters say we're tired of career politicians i mean that kind of makes sense because why would career politicians necessarily be better at dictating economic decisions oh, yeah. than someone who's actually spent their career doing economic decisions it i mean it makes sense but you have to remember these career politicians most of them if not all of them have gone to school for politics. They've studied economics. They Well, the, the economics that they've studied have been the macroeconomics that, like the type of decisions that they would actually be making. Yeah. Trump is, he's coming from a self-interested business perspective. He's coming from this perspective as, of how much money can we make? We need to maximize our profits. Whereas I think the, the politician side of it is, is more of just being able to cooperate with local, local economies. It's, it's more cooperation than co- competition against other businesses. Exactly. And here's another th- thing about Trump. He, he doesn't really have a good foreign policy agenda. He, not agenda. He's not a very nice speaker. I think we can all agree that he's pretty bombastic and he's pretty antagonistic in his speeches. I think even supporters um, would say that. That's oh, well, yeah. that's well, that's why they like him. I they, mean, exactly. It, yeah, when, when you talk to them, they say, "Well, he speaks his mind. He tells yeah. it as it is," which I I believe is just a way of uh, yeah, you know, that's being literal about his, his about his biases. He's he's speaking against a group of people, which mm-hmm. isn't necessarily a bad thing, but he's open about it, which most politicians aren't. Yeah. And there's also the thing that's been happening recently. Have have has, have you noticed this? I, Trump in his statements has been getting a little softer on immigration. I, I mean, I well, know, everyone's noticed yeah. this. This is, I mean, everyone who follows the news, of course. Yeah. Trump is now saying that he he doesn't plan to deport all of the illegal immigrants. And he's saying he's starting to do like a sort of think about the children thing. You know, he's being like, oh, but what about the kids? Things like well, that. Well, of course, because if he's going to flip yeah. his position, he has to have some reasoning, like rationalization. And. I th- a big a big reason for this is you, he wants to draw in moderate Republicans who are right now being like that's a little bit too uh, right wing for me. I think I'm gonna either not vote or vote for Hillary, which is bad for Trump. He needs those votes. Which th- th- that's a thing too, because even though it seems like everyone is either light or right or left, 
I would I would take a guess, and I would say that most people are actually more of in the middle. I think most yeah. people are able to switch between the candidates if they say something that they like, mm-hmm. which is why appealing is really the smart thing for Trump to do right now, yeah. because he's he spent his entire campaign building uh, building something. He's he spent his entire campaign building the idea that you know we should end illegal immigration. He was very tough on that, and once he's already won those people over. I don't think that changing his position will really mean anything. All right, and we're we're starting to run out of time, but I don't want to let uh, Hillary Clinton off the hook either. Oh There's... no, she has many th- flaws. Yeah, uh, I mean, let's let's talk about. I, I hate to bring this up. It's it's such a dead horse. People have been beating it for so long, but the email scandal. It's just so incredibly odd to me. Why would you have? a private email server and set it up and it just it there's so many steps to do that why would well, you do it does it ever seem like to you like Hillary and Bill Clinton it's like they're trying to create controversy like I, they, they do some they do something in which they know in the future they can almost get in the press because they did it do you it's so odd to me that well election season is coming up and you know you're going for the 2016 presidency and you you know that you're part of Obama's cabinet in 2012 that you're just building this private email server what are you doing it well, because doesn't make sense this is this is the thing most people call the opposing politicians stupid but I think we we would both agree that Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are ver- both very intelligent yes, people. Yes, they they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. So if they know what they're doing, then what explains the the malpractice? What what explains why Hillary Clinton is not able to anticipate this yeah. action? Like I don't, I don't. Know. Wouldn't she have some advisor telling her? Yeah, maybe that's not the best way to set up your email server. <laughs> I know. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know what went on in her head. I guess I, I don't really have all the information yeah. available to her. It's possible at the time that some advisor did tell her that that was like the best de- decision because that's the only thing in my mind that would convince a politician to do something like that. Yeah, and we're, we're starting to really run out of time now, but there's just more that I want to talk about with Hillary Clinton really quickly. Um, I think the, the the scandal with Bernie Sanders, even though I think both you and me can agree that Bernie Sanders was probably not going to win the primary. The thing is, he was, was he was down in the polls, and he had an ideology that wasn't... Most of the population not does mainstream. not agree with it. Yeah, but I think it sort of exposed that the DNC is pretty... They're, they're corrupt enough, you know? They're... They they've got a little bit of uh, insider things going on there. They they're not immune to to corruption themselves. Which you know? you've probably picked up that Tyler and I personally ag- agree more with the DNC's positions, but we definitely don't yeah. agree with the DNC itself. I think what's interesting is this election has shown the RNC is probably less rigged than the DNC because the RNC let Trump through. And they let him through by popular vote, which, I mean, that just means that they had an an election and Trump won and there was nothing they could do about it. Well, it was it was the political talk for almost six months, maybe even longer, uh, it, that Donald Trump can't possibly win because all of the establishment Republicans are against him. And then for some reason, he beats out Jeb Bush, an established brand. Yeah. He beats out Ted Cruz, Marco Rubio, you know, John Kasich. How can... It it can't be rigged if he's able to beat all of those people. Exactly. Um, well, I think we'll have to end it there. We're 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 gonna do another one of these. I think this was fun for me at least. I think this was a lot of fun. So this was our perspective, but we didn't yeah. get into too much. Make sure to send us um, angry emails. <laughs> yeah, W-R-M- we check our emails. We'll respond yeah. to anything. Yeah, wrmtahoe at gmail dot com. Right. Yes, it is. Okay, good. Oof. Would have been really embarrassing if I got that one wrong. Um, if I sent it to someone else's email, that would have been. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, um, this has been What Really Matters with Tyler and Matthew. On KOWL? Yeah, KOWL oh. 1490, the L. We just got a... Political edition. I just yeah. need to make sure that comes out. All right. Uh, thank you. Oh, these aren't the opinions of KOWL, by the way. Okay. Um, now that we've gotten that out of that, the way. Now that this is all out of the way and we're all good, uh, well, see you next week. Goodbye. <laughs>